you worked at you, the Intel, AMD, Apple with autopilot chip design and hardware design. What have you learned in terms of, um, or what have you learned have taken away from your time working with Elon Musk, working at Tesla, which is known to be a place of chaos, innovation, craftsmanship, and all I really those like things. the way you thought. Like, you think you have an understanding about what first principles of something is, and then you talk to Elon about it, and you you didn't scratch the surface. You know, he he has a deep belief that no matter what you do is a local maximum, and then. Elon was good at taking everything apart. And like, what's the deep first principle? Oh no, what's really the, no? What's really you know you know, yeah. you know that that you know ability to look at it without assumptions and and how constraints is, is super wild. You know, he built a rocket ship and you using know, electric car process. and you know everything. Well, it was super hard. And then people say, "Well, it's chaotic, really." to get out of all your assumptions, you think that's not gonna be unbelievably painful? And is Elon tough? Yeah, probably. Do people look back on it and say, boy, I'm really happy I had that experience to go take apart that many layers of assumptions? Sometimes super fun, sometimes painful. So it could be emotionally and intellectually painful, that whole process of just stripping away assumptions. Yeah, imagine 99% of your thought process is protecting your self-conception. And 98% of that's wrong. How do you think you're feeling when you get back into that one bit that's useful, and now you're open and you have the ability to do something different? I don't know if I got the math right. It might be 99.9, .9, but it ain't 50. Imagining it that 50% is hard enough. Yeah. Now, for a long time, I've suspected you could get better. Like you can think better, you can think more clearly, you can take things apart. And there's lots of examples of that. People who do that. So, and Elon is an example of that. Apparently, you are an example. So, I don't know if I am. I'm, I'm fun to talk to. <laughs> Certainly, I've learned a lot of stuff. Right. What are interesting or challenging aspects of building this specialized kind of computing system in the automotive space? I mean, there's two tricks to building like an automotive computer. One is the software team, the machine learning team, is developing algorithms that are changing fast. Yeah. So as you're building the, the accelerator, you have this you know, worry or intuition that the algorithms will change enough that the accelerator will be the wrong one. Right, and there's the generic thing, which is if you build a really good general purpose computer, say its performance is one, and then GPU guys will deliver about five X to performance for the same amount of silicon, because instead of discovering parallelism, you're given parallelism. So there's a, you know, there's a little creative tension there of, I want the acceleration afforded by specialization without being over specialized so that the new algorithm is so much more effective that you would have been better off on a GPU. So there is a tension there. Um, to build a good computer for an application like automotive, there's all kinds of sensor inputs and safety processors and a bunch of stuff. So one of Elon's goals is to make it super affordable. So every car gets an autopilot computer. So some of the recent startups you look at and they have a server in a trunk mm -hmm. because they're saying, I'm gonna build this autopilot computer that replaces the driver. So their cost budget's ten or twenty thousand dollars, and Elon's constraint was, "I'm going to put one every in every car, whether people buy auto autonomous driving or not." So the the cost constraint he had in mind was great, yeah. right? And to hit that, you had to think about the system design. That's complicated. And it's it's fun, you know. It's like it's like it's craftsman's work, like you know, a violin maker, right? Yeah. You can say Stradivarius is this incredible thing, and the musicians are incredible, but the guy making the violin, you know, picked wood and sanded it. And then he cut it, you know, and he glued it, and, you know, and he waited for the right day so that when he put the finish on it, it didn't, you know, do something dumb. That's craftsman's work, right? So a computer has to be cheap enough to put in every single car. Yeah. That's essentially boils down to craftsman's work. It's engineering. Yeah. You it's know, innovation. there's thoughtful decisions and problems to solve and 
trade-offs to make. Do you need 10 camera imports or eight? You know, this, you're building for the current car or the next one. You know, how do you do the safety stuff? You know, there's there's a whole bunch of details, but it's fun. Yeah. So, so I, I would say my brain has this idea that you can question first assumptions, yeah. and but I can go days at a time and forget that, and you have to kind of like circle back to that observation because it is because emotionally it's hard, challenging. Well, it's hard to just keep it front and center because you know you're you, you operate on so many levels all the time and. You know, getting this done takes priority or, you know, being happy takes priority or, you know, screwing around takes priority. Like, like, like how you go through life is complicated. Yeah. And then you remember, oh, yeah, I could really uh, think first principles. Oh, shit, that's, that's tiring, you know, but you do for a while and that's kind of cool. So just uh, as a last question in your sense from the big picture, from the first principles, do you think, you kind of answered already, but do you think autonomous driving is something we can solve on a timeline of years? So one, two, three, five, ten years, as opposed yeah. to a century? Yeah, definitely. Just to linger on it a little longer, where's the confidence coming from? Is it the fundamentals of the problem, the fundamentals of building the hardware and the software? As a computational problem, understanding ballistics, roles, topography, it seems pretty solvable. I mean, and you can see this, you know, like like speech recognition for a long time, people are doing, you know, frequency and domain analysis and, and all kinds of stuff. And that didn't work for at all, right? And then they did deep learning about it and it worked great. And it took multiple iterations and you know, autonomous driving is way past the frequency analysis point. And the data gathering is going up and the computation is yes. going up and the algorithm understanding is going up and there's a whole bunch of problems getting solved like that. So, yeah, I th we'll be, we very well could be surprised. And I think with the rate of improvement on all aspects on both the compute and the, the, the software and the hardware, there's gonna be pleasant surprises all over the place. Yeah.